Hi again then guys, and welcome to episode 42 of B-Road Ballers, the review series for Gran Turismo's selection of hot hatches. And many hot hatches fall into a category where you could say they're pretty good, maybe some are okay, but in general there are relatively few that really stand out above all others. And those that do stand out tend to stand out by quite a lot, such as the Focus ST, the HPA Golf, the Megane RS, and this vehicle, which is the Golf R. Now this is the 6th generation Golf, and they made a very interesting change with this particular model, because instead of having a Golf R32, as we did with both the 4th and 5th generation using a 3.2 litre engine, this car went down a slightly more Japanese route, with a 2.0-litre turbo putting out more power than the 3.2-litre versions that preceded it. It also, for obvious reasons, dropped the 32 from the name, because it is no longer a 3.2-litre. So, how does it compare to the R32s? Is there a significant improvement with the 2.0-litre engine? You'd probably assume that the vehicle would be perhaps lighter, maybe more torquey, thanks to having a larger turbo, etc. How does it fare against them? Well, pretty well. The 2.0-litre engine isn't necessarily as fun a concept as a 3.2. The 3.2 is a, a lazier engine, it's less stressed, it's being worked less hard than the 2.0-litre turbo, but it does have some disadvantages. It's not as powerful, for instance, as this 2.0-litre turbo engine, and although it does have a decent amount of torque, it's also a relatively heavy engine. That being said, the Golf R is actually heavier than the Mark IV R32, which is on the game. This car weighs in at 1,224 kilos, and the specs between the two cars are actually not necessarily as far apart as you might expect, given that they have completely different engines. The power, the torque, even the weight and the PP are surprisingly close. Now this car is superior in a couple of ways, as you'd expect it to be. The PP is higher, the power is higher, and overall it is the faster of the two. But, not by as big a margin as you might expect. The PP, for instance, is only 5 PP higher on this vehicle. The power is more at 484 horsepower, which is exactly the same as the Scirocco R, with which it obviously shares its engine. Unlike the Scirocco, though, this vehicle is all-wheel drive. Now, as far as torque, it puts out 388 foot-pounds, which is actually less than the R32, and as we already said, it weighs 1,224 kilos, which gives it a horsepower per tonne of just under 400, which isn't amazing, but it's okay, considering that it's not as light as some other hot hatches, it's not too surprising that the horsepower per tonne would suffer a little bit. Now it has a little bit less power than a Focus ST, quite a bit less than the Megane, and obviously far less than the HPA version of the Golf R32. So how does it compare in terms of performance? Well, the all-wheel drive gives it a very big advantage over many of the others in terms of acceleration, especially off the line. You take that Megane with its over 500 horsepower, you take the Focus ST with its 495 roughly, they're going to have a lot of wheel spin, a lot of torque steer, they're going to shred those tyres if you give it a full bore standing start. This car doesn't really suffer from that. Sure, you'll get a little bit of wheel spin, but the uptake of power is much quicker on an all-wheel drive car, so you can get this car off the line much, much faster. In fact, for the quarter mile, there's no comparison. The Golf R will absolutely annihilate a Focus ST, a Megane RS, or pretty much anything else with front-wheel drive. So for sheer acceleration, it's an excellent car. There are other all-wheel drive models which can give it a run for its money of course, including the R32, but against front-wheel drive or even rear-wheel drive hatches, it's always going to win. For top speed, it's not necessarily as strong as some others, but it can do well over 200 miles per hour under its own power. And as far as price, well it is pretty expensive for a hot hatch, it's a 50 grand car. 
That is still a fraction cheaper than the Scirocco, but it is around seven grand more than the Golf R32. You do of course get customizable bodywork, fully detailed interior, and more power. So as far as whether or not I'd recommend this car, well, of course I would. It's one of the best all-round hot hatches in the game. And it's not just about straight line performance. One of the great things about the Golf R is actually the handling. It's excellent, because although it's all-wheel drive and powerful, it's not an overly big car. It's not small by any means, but it's not particularly large either, so it's relatively nimble, and the all-wheel drive means that you can throw it through corners with much more control than you would, say, a rear-wheel drive or even some front-wheel drive cars, especially in much lower speed corners like hairpins, where a front-wheel drive car could very easily spin up its tyres, trying to get traction out of the corner. It is expensive, but I would say that this is one of the hot hatches which is actually worth that price. If you're looking for a high-end, premium hot hatch, this is one of the best all-round ones you can get. I would say it's better than the Scirocco, because although the Scirocco is more sporty and a little bit lighter, it's also only front-wheel drive, and that's always going to be a hindrance, such as for things like acceleration. Now, front-wheel drive has its advantages, of course, and I've discussed those before, but for an all-round package, the Golf R, especially for its power level, is a very difficult car to beat. Pretty much the only thing that can flat out beat it in a straight line is the HPA Golf. And that car has well over 700 horsepower, so it's not really that fair a comparison. The HPA is almost in a complete class of its own. Pretty much everything else would have real trouble outrunning this car, especially for acceleration. So if you're looking for a strong hot hatch, it goes without saying you should definitely check out this car. And that's it overall for this particular episode, so I'll see you guys next time, and as always, thanks for watching.